In this video, I'm looking at the weighted moving average. I'm going to look at what it is, how you calculate it, and how you make it adjustable, dynamic in Excel. So it is easy to use. You can copy the formulas and use the same process every time. So let's have a look at how the weighted moving average compares to the other main types of moving average. First of all, compared to the exponential moving average, which also biases the average in favor of most recent values and the simple moving average, which calculates all values equally. We can see here over a number of different periods that the weighted moving average is the most responsive. So for traders who are looking for something different, it's less commonly used and it is very responsive. The weighted moving average is a good average to try. To visualize the simple moving average, Every single price within that average is given equal weighting. Whether it's the most recent price or the oldest price, every price is considered equally significant. If we want to calculate a simple moving average in Excel, we're using the example of 20 periods. We use the formula equals average. We cover the last 20 prices and we press enter and we copy the formulas down to the cells below. So what do we mean by a weighted moving average? Well, as you can see on this chart, a weighted moving average means that the different prices in the average are assigned a different weighting, with the most recent price having the highest weighting and the oldest price having the lowest weighting. And this means that the average is more responsive and assigns more importance to the most recent prices. So how do we calculate the weighted moving average in Excel? Well, the first thing we need is the weightings. And I'm going to use a handy Excel formula called equals sequence. And all this does is it calculates a sequence based on the number from one to this number. So I'm using a 20 period example. So it calculates one to 20. I'm going to use another formula called equals sum, which just calculates the sum of all of these values. And then I'm going to calculate my weighting. So that was equals the number in the sequence divided by the total numbers. Let's look at how to calculate the weighted moving average in Excel. Now, there is an easier, quicker way to do this. But first of all, I want to make sure you understand the principle behind it. So the most recent price gets the highest weighting. The next most recent price gets the next highest weighting and so on. And you can see on the screen that this is a little bit time consuming. And there's a few problems. First of all, it's easy to make a mistake. Secondly, it's not very dynamic. So we want to make it less easy to make a mistake and dynamic. So there we go. We've got the calculations in full. And let's have a look at how to make it a bit easier. Let's use an Excel formula to make it easier to calculate. So new column, we're using the formula sum product. We're going to highlight the previous 20 price values, put a comma in, and then our weighting values. And we're going to use F4 or use dollar signs to make this an fixed reference. Copy the formulas down and there we go. As simple as that, we have the weighted moving average. And the next step and the final step is to make the WMA fully dynamic, adjustable. This means you can test a five period, 50 period or a 200 period as easily and with exactly the same formulas. So the first thing that I'm going to do is adjust my list of weightings. So you remember we use this function called sequence and I'm going to make that reference another cell. What that does mean is when I adjust that other cell, so this cell is going to determine the number of periods in my WMA, it will adjust my sequence. So the next step after that is I am going to adjust my weighting formulas. So the first thing I'm going to do is just use a simple if statement so that if there is no number there, it's going to return a blank. And then I am going to copy this formula down to all the cells, as many cells as I need. So I'm going to use a few hundred approximately, but you can use as many cells as you need to calculate your average. 
Okay, so now our weighting is variable, it's dynamic. Let's look at the formula itself for the average. So I'm going to use exactly the same sum product and I'm going to use a function called offset. And offset is going to be used here to create a range. So I'm no longer using a fixed range, I'm using an offset range that is adjustable by the cell that I've already used to set the weighting numbers. And I'm going to use exactly the same offset function to dynamically adjust to the size of the range of the weighting numbers as well. And I'm going to use F4. I'm going to use the dollar symbols to make sure this range does not change. And I'm going to double click on the right, bottom right hand corner and copy all the values below. And you can see we have a third weighted moving average, exactly the same as the previous two, except this one is now dynamic. And you can see when I adjust it to a higher number of values, we've got these ref errors. This does not mean we have an error in our formula. It simply means we've run out of space. So we need to allow enough rows in our Excel table to calculate the values that we need. This ref error is not saying we have a problem, it's saying we just do not have enough rows. So the simple way to do that is just to start from a lower rows, allow those rows there for pre-processing. Hope you enjoyed this video about how to calculate the weighted moving averages. If you would like more information about technical indicators, and in particular about backtesting your trading strategies, Please subscribe to this channel, like this video and go to trainingformed.com.